Well, Amen has a whole uh, series of videos that describes the um, effects of COVID and ways that we can prevent that through things like vitamin D and sunlight, exercise. And today we're gonna focus on one more way that we believe that we can prevent um, COVID from actually uh, wreaking devastation in our lives and in our church members. And so I have with me my wife, Dr. Lindy Schwartz. She's gonna just tell us a little bit about the effects of COVID and why we definitely don't wanna get it. And then Dr. John Shin will be talking a little bit about the vaccine. So Lindy, tell us about COVID. When we talk about COVID-19, it is caused by a, a virus and the whole name is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. It is not just respiratory though, because it also affects the heart, it affects the kidneys, it affects the brain, um, it affects the blood vessels with blood clots and so forth that can be really catastrophic. And what we have witnessed in the last year and a half is truly the devastating effects on families. What we do know about the disease is that it manifests itself in a variety of ways, including asymptomatic people and people that have the full spectrum uh, requiring mechanical ventilation to support their breathing and so forth. The problem with this virus is many viruses just come and they have their symptoms, but then they disappear. But this particular virus has the capacity to continue affecting people even when the acute infection is gone. For example, now we're receiving reports that the effects on the central nervous system most common complaint is a foggy brain, and that happens in about one third of people who have it. This is a serious disease. Now we have the opportunity to do a whole lot more in terms of prevention and treatment of this disease. So you definitely don't want to catch it. It's devastating, and so one of the very best things we can do is prevent it. So Dr. Uh, John Shin is actually a fellow at the National Institutes of Health and we'll ask John to just tell us about the various vaccines and how they work. Yeah, sure. So there's currently three vaccines that are authorized to be used for COVID-19. And these were authorized under the Emergency Use Authorization uh, Act. And the three are the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. All three of these vaccines manufactured a spike protein from scratch using your body's cells. Mm -hmm. So that's the common thread for all three vaccines. There is concerns raised about how does that protein affect our immune system and does it have downstream uh, effects? Um, but we're gonna get exposed to this protein either through the virus itself, and in that case, there could be hundreds of proteins with it that could affect our immune system in far more ways, or we can get just this little target of protein that is just for the spike protein. It doesn't alter our DNA. Um, it just trains our immune system to recognize that if it sees it again. And so really it should have a lot less immune effects than getting exposed to the, the virus itself. Um, Lindy, can you tell us just a little bit about the development of the vaccine? The concern that's been raised by many people, and I think one of the major concerns is that this vaccination was so new and done so rapidly that it wasn't adequately tested. Um, and what is interesting is that we are, have been blind to what's been going on behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, two activities have been, been proceeding. One of them is the development of adaptive platforms such as messenger RNA and vectors to develop vaccines. The second one is using um, structural biology to develop and design immunogens that would stimulate the immune system. So this is not actually new technology. This has been in the works now for decades, at least since HIV, looking at using um, parts of the virus as an immunogen to stimulate the immune system. And that's what this vaccine is. So it's really not new at all. It's, it's decades old. Interestingly, this many vaccines in less than a year is novel and I think it's remarkable. And I think it's a testimony to how the God of science has worked through the scientists to develop um, very effective ways of protecting society. If I can kind of build on what you're saying there, Lindy, a lot of people have concerns about how quickly these vaccines were developed and sort of they're thinking maybe shortcuts were taken with yeah. safety and now we're all experimenting on the public without knowing what kind of adverse effects this may have. 
And one thing that we need everyone to understand is that, yes, these vaccines were developed in record time, but not because safety corners were cut. Yes. For example, a lot of processes that usually are done sequentially were done in parallel. Mm -hmm. And when we tell people about the benefits of vaccination, let's be clear, every medical intervention has potential side effects mm -hmm. and the vaccines are the same way. There are potential side effects. Some people very rarely get a serious side effect called anaphylaxis. They're deathly allergic to the vaccine. That happens. You have people who are deathly allergic to bananas and fruits, but that doesn't mean that you stop eating fruits because some people are, are, are allergic to them. It's just you have to take the risks and the benefits. Mm -hmm. So some people ask, if I'm living the best life possible to maximize my immune system, why even expose myself to that little risk mm -hmm. of something bad happening? And it's a great question because they feel like either I trust in God to protect me or I trust in the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And which am I going to trust? Is it going to be a denial? Is it hypocritical of me to say that I trust in God and still get the vaccine? And I look at it this way. There's many ways to approach the problem. But when you learn to drive, you go to driving school, driver's ed, you get your learner's permit, you get your driver's license. And then you pray before you drive, hopefully, to ask God to protect you on the road. And you do the best you can. Mm -hmm. you, you obey all the laws. You don't run red lights. You stop at every stop sign. Mm -hmm. And yet you still put on a seatbelt. Mm -hmm. Is it hypocritical for you to ask God to protect you after you've done all those measures to still put on a seatbelt mm -hmm. just in case you get into an accident? And obviously the answer is no. What about asking God to keep you and your family safe at night and yet you still lock the door? Why do you lock the door? You know, why do you avoid walking in dark alleys by yourself at night in crime-ridden neighborhoods? So what I'm trying to get at is that it is not a denial of faith to take proper precautions. And even as a physician, I want to minimize the drugs that I'm exposed to, and I'm sure everyone yes. has the same sentiment yeah. here. Yeah. But at the same time, we understand that despite our best efforts, mm -hmm. we're living in a fallen world with degraded DNA. Mm -hmm. And due to no fault of our own, sometimes our immune systems are not sufficient to protect us from all of the things out there that can infect us. And COVID-19 is one of them. Mm -hmm. So given that situation, I think the benefits of the vaccines far outweigh the risks. Okay. so. We've just very briefly scratched the surface about the benefits of vaccines. There are risks. You have to weigh this between your own health team and your physician and pray about whether or not um, you should get vaccinated. Um, but we just wanted to try to make people aware that the vaccines are scientifically based. Um, they're based on physiology. It uses science. Um, we think they have been uh, very effectively studied and with COVID being so devastating, we want to use every single tool available to us today to be able to defend against it. Thank you. <laughs>